All right, class, I want to welcome you to Western Civ 105. And I just want to say that I'm really excited to um, teach this class. Um, I'm always excited to teach actually all of my classes. The one thing, though, that is a challenge, and there's no way around this, is that this is really a cram course. And um, I think it's important for everybody to step in, really kind of having the mindset of understanding like what's going on. We are already covering a lot of information in a survey course on just a regular semester. And now you're going to be just cramming <coughs> um, even more information each week. Um, so you just need to kind of realize that you're going to need to like um, really prioritize this class to succeed. I really feel like I make this class set up as realistic as possible to maximize the kind of knowledge that you can attain in this class um, and have the, my academic standards uh, appropriate to what's required. Um, so I, I, I do everything as, po as much as possible to make this uh, um, easy for you all, but I don't make the class easy, okay? Um, and so you're going to need to contact me if you have issues and you're going to need to, again, set, a, set aside time to figure out things. Um, it's the first week that people are understandably the most confused about what to do. Um, so here's what I'd advise you. <laughs> don't watch this video and don't start trying to figure out my class the day that assignments are due, which are going to, which will be um, the Thursday when this class officially, uh, so, so every week, so we're, we're going to start a class, right? And once my class is open, it's very consistent, my schedule. Thursdays will be due discussions and video notes. When people hit me up a few hours on Thursday before assi the assignments are due and, and having a panic attack, I don't know what to tell you because I'm not available every second, right? I need time to be able to respond. Um, but I just want you to know, I mean, you, you could try to contact me, but I'm just saying I'm not going, you know, if, if I'm available, I will. But you really just kind of want to take a look at, you know, what's going on once I set it up. So this Friday morning, I'll probably open up the first week's class to start getting you familiar with it. For now, I'm not going to open it up just yet. But I wanted you to see this announcement. I wanted you to take a look at the syllabus. The, so so there's, there's several things I'm going to say. Um, the syllabus is helpful, but I alter things, as I mentioned in the syllabus, each week if I think it, I need to. The best thing for you to do is every Sunday, I'm going to open up the next week's worth of work. I try to do it by noon, if possible. I try to. But it'll, it'll be no later than the evening of, sun, of each Sunday that I open up the next week's uh, workload. And you should just look at what's in the module there. That's what's expected of you. Okay? Sometimes I actually... I mean, if I'm going to alter the assignments during the week, it's going to be to your advantage. I'm not going to add more to you. Okay? I might say, hey... I'm cutting out X, Y, or Z assignment. Well, you want to know that, right? That's a good thing to know. You know, you're going to find that um, I will often put it in my announcements, and also sometimes you will see it in the module. The module will open up, and it'll say um, this assignment, whatever assignment it is, is canceled. And you know, that's that. Okay, so go with that. Okay, so returning to expectations of what this course should look was is going to look like to you it is consistent thursdays again announcements video notes you have to write notes on all the videos i have and when you when you first see this week open up you're going to feel maybe a little overwhelmed i have a lot of videos these videos are my lectures that i use with the powerpoints and sometimes documentary clips but if you look at the time that each video um, is and you look at the total amount of time 
for, for all the videos, it's not much different than if you were sitting in a face-to-face class for a, you know, a summer course like this, okay? And this gives you a chance to watch um, each segment in pieces. It can be relatively easy if you're starting right away. If you try to put all this off, you know, a few hours before they're due on Thursday uh, by midnight, um, you're going to just be overwhelmed and you're certainly not going to learn anything. And it's going to be reflected in your notes. I will end up giving you an example kind of what I'm looking for. Basically, it's most of the time it's two, uh, two points made per video. Sometimes I'll ask for more if it's a longer video, okay? The whole point of this assignment, and actually all of my assignments, I'll talk about Sunday in just a second, is you are demonstrating to me that you are actually listening to these videos and you're watching them. And um, that you're reading, if possible. By the way, I got to talk about the textbook and some problems I'm having with textbook companies in a second. So I'll talk about the reading portion in just a little bit. Um, so, but basically, whatever you, I, 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 your work should reflect to me, like, I mean, I know what class I'm teaching. I know the subject, right? I, I don't add certain things. You know, I don't want to see Wikipedia stuff that I didn't actually put in there. I mean, if you find something that you really love, you did some side research, and you want to add it, and you're going to refer to that, then, you know, that's one thing. But, I, I mean, the point is the video notes are, you're just taking notes on, on what I'm talking about. And it should be substantial, meaning... <clears throat> if you say um, King Louis the Fourteenth was a man, well, okay, or he was French, but like, why are we talking about this guy? I mean, what's the point? Why am I bringing it up? Uh, okay, so so you know, what was the significance? Why did we study this particular person? I try really hard to make sure that your time's not wasted in the sense of getting the significance of the history. Sometimes I will draw in many things from the outside or modern events into it. But ultimately, I'm wanting you to see the power or the understanding of why we should care about absolutism in Europe. Or like, why why are, does this topic that we're studying, is is it really important? Is it relevant? And I want to see that reflected in your work. And on Sundays, your last assignments during the week that are due every week is on average two papers. On my regular classes, when we don't have a cram course, it's just one. It can be a minimum of one page each. That's like two two pages as possible often. Um, One page is the minimum that I expect from you. But if you want the maximum points from the minimum, you got to give me the maximum. Okay. In other words... Your paper, same thing. You don't, these are not research papers. Let me clarify again. These are not research papers. These papers are meant to reflect, again, the same thing I talked about with the notes. So this actually um, returns me to the to uh, um, talking about how the notes can complement your uh, paper life, if you want to put it that way. So what I advise you to do is you look each week and see what top uh, topics are um, required for your Sunday papers. Those papers are going to be asking something that applied to the content that we discussed during the week. If you listen to the videos and take notes on the topics that are going to be discussed for sun for that are that are going to be for the Sunday paper, you can write me notes that address the points, right, right, right. Like, like you're, so you're watching a video and you're seeing a point that's made in the video that is also going to apply to the Sunday paper. And you could take your pile of notes that you just had turned in on Thursday and you can help formulate them into a paper. This might seem a little repetitive, this information, but this is my whole point. We're covering so much information. The idea that I have in this class is that each week 
you will have been something, something will have been drilled into your brain to, to like have um, from that week. And so I'm going to maybe stab at a few points over and over. You're not expected to memorize anything in this class, um, but you're expected to do work. So this is important. You don't have to memorize all these facts. When people memorize all these things, that doesn't mean that they're learning the importance of history. I know how this goes. I was a student as well. You'll memorize all these dates and these names, and if you're a good student, you'll get an A, and you didn't, and then you're done. You don't care about it anymore, right? You're like a lawyer who masters their case, and once the case is done, you don't sit around and think about all the information you had. You, you're, you're done. You're done with the information, right? I don't want that with this. We need to understand something. And I addressed this in the first video, and um, I've already even altered some of my views on that just a little bit. Not a lot, but my views of Western civilization keep changing. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, we're just in a really strange uh, time that this topic is extremely relevant. No matter what you think of Trump, and I'm going to try not to push my own politics on this too much, uh, he is a part of a trend globally. And in the Western world, there is a certain type of crisis that is taking place. A, a, a kind of existential crisis about what it means to be Western. What does it mean to be European? What does it mean to be an American? In the past, there were very clear ideologies about that. And we have to be really blunt and frank about this. They were all supremacist. Now, many cultures have supremacist ideas, but... The supremacist ideologies that came out of the West correlated with actual supreme military power that dominates the globe. And with that kind of um, falling apart, it's not even the right word, but like, but kind of falling apart or, or becoming much more messy, there's a lot of blowback from the rest of the world that had felt exploited and dominated by the West. And... There are many, many people in Western nations now that don't, we're not only from Western, uh, they're not from Europe or, or, you know, they're not white America. Um, some of them are directly from places that have been historically exploited by the West. So this is complicates the internalization or, or the way that we view things. Now, some people think that this is why you got to crack down on immigration. This is what's taking place in Europe and this is what's taking place in the United States. Um... And this is leading to massive social tensions, anxieties. I mean, look what's happening right now. It is a fact. Families are being separated from each other as a punishment for people who want to immigrate without having legal permission to do so in the United States. You're going to see more of this. It's going to get harsher because the world is getting poorer. There's a lot of war and conflict. And this is going to continue to escalate, I'm afraid. I mean, there are some things that could help alleviate it. But it's really important, I think, right now that no matter what your political inclinations are, you really want to start thinking through right now where your morals and ethics are and where is your understanding about what's already happened in the past and why are we in the situation that we're in now. Maybe if you study this history well, you will have a more sane balanced, nuanced view that will help you maybe be a better contribu a contributor to something that would make the world a better, more stable place than what we've seen in the past, which is a mob mentality, um, fear. And, um, you know, I mean, w w history has a lot of negative examples and a lot of positive ones. I would like you to be able to take this history in and utilize it in the most positive way as possible. That's the only real main objective of the polit politics that I'm going to try to shove down your throat is that it's not about the ism, but I'm just saying, what is the fruitage of your understanding 
of, of, the, of the world. Hmm? You know, what's the result of it? And uh, I hope for the better. Okay, so that's that. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll have plenty of time to explore most of that. I'll be showing you also a lot of announcement videos on stuff. Uh, I'll try to take a little, uh, I'm already going in 15 minutes here. I'm going to say the last few things. Um, many of my students are single parents, are parents, just parents, uh, working a lot of jobs. Some, many of my students now are in the military. Uh, some of my students are refugees. A lot of people coming into to this, uh, my class with a lot going on out beyond just the class. I've been a single dad most of my adult life. Now my daughter moved out on her own, and, and so I'm actually having a very different set of circumstances now for the first time. A little empty nest syndrome, if you will. Okay, but I, 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 I struggled a lot as a student being a parent, and I've struggled a lot even as a professor, and I also have to work another job to survive. This is the economy we have. I'm not a full-time professor, and um, that's a whole other topic of what that means, right? So... I'm very supportive, but you got to communicate with me, okay? You can't just disappear and then try to show up later and explain yourself. I need, I need you to communicate. That's what I want, okay? All right. So, I, I'll have your back. You just got to work. You got to work with me. I'll work with you. Lastly, the books. Man, a part of this global—I don't know. I'm going to sound like a, 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 a now. Now I'm going to out myself as a radical Marxist professor. Global capitalism and textbooks. <laughs> They're trying to sell, it's almost impossible for me to get regular textbooks now because they're trying to switch them over into the digital strictly and make you pay also for these programs that I don't want to use and I hate and I am infuriated about this. And so in the past, I, this, this last semester was the first time ever where I, I literally had it where we couldn't get enough textbooks for my class, that, that the bookstore is struggling to get textbooks. I called up the textbook company and it's basically like we're now in a different phase of history. I don't I don't know what to do about this. Am I going to have to start having my students just buy the whole program and then not use it or I, I don't know. So some of you are going to have different editions. I already have somebody telling me about this. The textbook, I made these lectures to be utilized with the textbook. And um, having different editions throws off the, the pages of where to go. I'm going to allow you to do whatever you can do to get in the textbook, but we're going to have to work with each other to try to correlate, you know, what, what textbook edition you have with my lectures. And hopefully this is going to work out. If, you know, this semester, I guess, is going to be my kind of case study to see just like what we're dealing with here. Any kind of major issues, though, I'll take care of it. Like you're not, it's, you're not going to be faulted for anything like that, but you do need to get at this point a textbook. That is as close to possible to the one that I've required, okay? <laughs> In terms of the addition and, and uh, whatever. Um, if you, well, you have any issues or questions with that, you also contact me. I normally don't encourage phone calls and texting for, for me, between me and the student. But in an online class, I think, because I also work two jobs, the quickest way for you to get a hold of me is actually to text me. And I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So I do encourage that. Just not at 1 in the morning, though, please, or 6 in the morning, okay? Um, so I'm going to end it there. Have a great week. I'm looking forward to having you in the class once you get started. And we'll be in touch.